Good morning from the beautiful market town of Framlingham in Suffolk. You can see the old church of St Michael's just over the roof of that house. Henry VIII's illegitimate son is buried in that church. And this is the market square. So on a Saturday morning, it's absolutely buzzing with market stalls and delicious food. But today the buzzing is inside this hotel room where we are hanging out with Geraldino. Yeah, I'll, I'll call Mr Beale if, if you've got your credit cards with you. Yes, and I'm will willing to spend it on big breakfast, Gerald. That's exactly Let's where go. we're going. That's exactly <laughs> where we're going. But yeah, it's lovely in here. Isn't it gorgeous? I'll show everyone where we slept last night. So beautiful. And Galahad's been loving every minute of it. I picked this especially for you. So is someone speaking? Because I can't see anyone other than you, Philip. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> blended right into the sofa. That's a lovely idea. All right, come on, let's go to breakfast. <laughs> yeah. We are in such an old building. I love you can see the old wooden pegs everywhere as well, holding it together. I mean, it must be what, 1600s? Jerry reserved this table for us and it's a beautiful day. I'm really bubbling with excitement to be here with you, Gerald. Oh. I love it in Framlingham. It's beautiful. This is the town I went to school in from the age of six to 18. So for me, this is home. Look at this. This is the way to start a day. Jerry and I have had the same idea. Philip, however, has gone for the whole option. <laughs> After last night's delicious. fish and chips, it was so good. It was so big and I ate everything. Me too. So he Sorry. had his first fish and chips. I just took the fish out of the batter and gave him the fish. He loved it, didn't he? He was wolfing it down. If you're not careful, he's going to have his first bacon no, as well. No, no, no. <laughs> the I know, I know. <laughs> no one can miss Jerry's taxi because look at that colour. Gerald. Your place is sunshine in the heart of Framlingham. Well, you can't beat, you know, a bit of yellow when the sun is shining. No, you can't. It's both of our favourite colours. And color. a couple of taxis. Mummy's place next door is such a bright blue that together they just look like one of Daddy's paintings. When people are looking for the area, they say, just look for the Ukrainian flag. <laughs> I'm missing you already. I miss you, Gerald. It's the best two days I've had in over a week. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. See you Love soon. You too. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. It's so lovely being with Jerry. I actually really hated leaving him. I love being in Framingham. I love being with Jerry. But we are on our way to get a dining table that Philip found at auction. And it's a simple enough table, but it goes much bigger than the one that we've got now, which is what he's really, really excited about. Unfortunately, it's three hours from Framingham. We have made it to the auction house. Here is the table with the new leaves. And the reason Philip's so happy is that until we find our forever table. Yes. It means we don't need to use tablecloths at breakfast. We can use placemats, which will make a huge difference because our laundry bill is insane yes. and the amount of tablecloths. It's also the fact that it opens up to be over four meters, which means that we can actually have one massive table with at least 14 people. Yeah. Whereas now it's one metal table. No, it's going to be much, much table. better. And on the laundry side, it will have paid for itself in less than a month, which is quite yes. scary, isn't it? I know. Bye, darling. There go Philip and Galahad. Philip's dropped me off because I'm not going home with them. I have a ticket to a book launch at the Victorian Albert Museum tonight. It's for Tracy Chevalier's new book. Most of you probably know her from her book, Girl with a Pearl Earring, which was made into a movie with Scarlett Johansson. And tonight she is launching a new book set on the island of Murano in the heyday of glass blowing. So I was so excited about that and happened to be in London at the right time. So I thought I'd go along. I won't be able to take you obviously into the lecture, but hopefully I can show you some of the corridors on the way. It's so beautiful. There's the queue of people going in now and all I need to do is work out where to cross this busy road. I've made it across in one piece and we're about to go in. I'm a member of the VNA and when you're a member, you're able to get tickets to these really fun events like this. There have been some great interior design ones. I went to one with Philip where it was a talk about Robert Kimes' influence on interior design. That was one of the last ones we went to, but I've seen so many wonderful things here and I'm really excited about tonight. It's the most beautiful museum from its architecture as much as what's in it. This stunning mosaic floor is part of the staircase leading upstairs. We're all making our way to the lecture theatre at the moment. Look 
at that ceiling and the gorgeous windows and you can see more of the building just beyond. The walk to the events is always one of my favorite things because the events are after hours and walking along on the 15 minute stroll to get to the lecture theater feels like a private view of the galleries. This is the corridor that I most look forward to seeing every time with these huge Victorian frescoes running along it. And look at the ceiling, the arched ceiling with all of those mythological figures. You have to hand it to the Victorians. They knew what they were doing with the decorative arts. I'm just walking past Lucian Freud's whippets and past medieval and Renaissance treasures. It's very, very hard not to get distracted at this point and miss the lecture altogether. And again, it's hard to know whether to look up or whether to look around you. Just before I go up to the lecture theatre, I just want to show you this area, which I think is probably made for children to really look closely at objects because you can be overwhelmed by objects in museums. But look at this. It makes you see each object individually is this perfect work of art and i think i found what would probably be philip's favorite thing in the museum that darling tiny silver secretaire and you see the central door it even has a little cow on it and those little working drawers underneath and then a face in a medallion that is exquisite i really need to get moving this is too much fun follow the herd a perfect silver cow jug. Okay, one last one and then we'll go upstairs. Oh, the workmanship, the delicacy. This is the reason the V&A is one of my favourite museums in the world. This is the gorgeous staircase to the lecture theatre. People are just going in now. I came up to give you this viewpoint and show you the amazing railings up here. But I think I can get into the lecture theatre, into the upper tier here. But just before going in, I'll show you the new book. They were selling it just at the foot of the stairs and Tracy Chevalier will be signing copies after the lecture. But already I'm excited. Venice 1486. The lecture theatre is splendid with this gorgeous painted motif on the dome. And I don't know if you can quite see, but it's picked out very delicately on the modern wooden panelling beneath. Oh my goodness, it was absolutely wonderful. And I learned so much as I do every time I come to one of the talks at the V&A. And here, in a little aside about one of the auxiliary characters, the early stages of the book, Maria Barovier, I found out that the Barovier family have been one of the longest family firms in the world. And you will not believe the amount of time the Barovier's have been making glass for a thousand years. And in the 20th century, the most famous Barovia was Arcole Barovia, and that's the tray that I bought in the little brocante in Causan sur vaux It was by Arcole Barovia. And I find out about this long line of Barovia stretching back a thousand years who've been making glass on the island of Murano because I came to this talk today and now I'll always look at that tray in a whole new light. Isn't that absolutely wonderful? And I cannot wait to read the book. Tracy Chevalier has signed it and well, I might need to wait until perhaps I go to Venice this winter and read it there. I'm not sure I'll be able to have the discipline to wait that long. Now I'm going to jump in the tube and head over to the other side of town where Philip and Galahad are waiting for me at home in Angel and I promised I'll pick up poker balls for us on the way back. Philip usually comes with me to all of these events but he didn't this time because it's Galahad's first night ever in London and we don't want to leave him with a babysitter, okay, a dog sitter, uh, for the first time in the new flat. So Philip offered to stay behind and be with him but they're all settled in so I'll get Pokeballs, wine, and flowers on my way home. Okay, I admit it. I've already cracked. I have the Pokeball, and now I'm heading to Sainsbury's to get a bottle of wine and some flowers. And I can report that after reading just two chapters, I'm all ready to put on the book. I grew up in the countryside and I prefer living in the countryside and just seeing fields and cows when I open my curtains in the morning. But I must admit that coming to London gives me this jolt of inspiration. I love looking in all the shop windows, going to the museums, going to talks at the V&A. In fact, I find that even living in France, it's worth being a member of the V&A because when I come over, I try and find out what's on and go and see that. 
Sainsbury's purveyor of fine wine and flowers. This is the perfect setup. And Galahad is already loving it here. He's made a little nest for himself between us. Cheers, darling. Cheers. It's good to be reunited, even if we were only apart for two hours. I was okay, but he was missing you. <laughs> oh, you were fine. I was fine.